Hello children, how have you been? The topic that will be discussed today is from your supplementary text, Unit 11, Ancient Education System of India. Well, the text begins with three important questions. Question 1. Did you know that India has been the centre of learning since ancient times? Question 2. How did we come to know about this? Question 3. There are inscriptions on stones and copper, palm leaf records and our scriptures as evidences of the historic origins of learning in India. Today, we follow an education system in which learning takes place through syllabus, curricula, textbooks and assessment practices. Have you ever thought what these were like in the past? Just like the culture and tradition of India, our education system also has a rich history of its own. Knowledge was passed on from one generation to another which is reflected in the teachings of today. Many travellers from different parts of the world began visiting India during the early times. The richness of our culture, the vastness of our land and high praises of our rulers attracted these visitors. To quote from the text, To them, India was a land of wonder. The fame of Indian culture, wealth, religions, philosophies, art, architecture, as well as its educational practices had spread far and wide. The education system of ancient times was regarded as a source for the knowledge, traditions and practices that guided and encouraged humanity. As you all know, there are four Vedas, the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda and Atharva Veda. Now let us look into the salient features of our education system from Rig Veda onwards. Point number one. A child could start his learning at the age of five. In order for this to happen, a Vidya Rambha or the beginning of learning ceremony which included the worship of Goddess Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, was held to mark its commencement. 2. Our educational system was heavily guided by the Vedas and other scriptures. 3. It focused on the holistic development of the individual, nourishing both the inner and the outer self. 4. The moral, physical, spiritual and intellectual aspects of life were stressed upon. 5. Values such as humility, truthfulness, discipline, self-reliance and respect for all creations were upheld. 6. A student had to appreciate the balance between Prakriti or nature and Purusha, human being. 7. It emphasized on the importance of having a healthy mind and a healthy body. I quote from the text. You can see that education in India has a heritage of being pragmatic, achievable and complementary to life. Unquote. Moving on to our sources of education. We Indians have to always be proud of our rich heritage, which has given us texts like the Vedas, Brahmanas, Upanishads and Dharma Sutras. All these texts have been our sources of learning. The works of Aryabhata on astronomy, Panini on grammar, Katyayana on Sanskrit grammar and mathematics, Patanjali on yoga, Charaka and Sushruta on medicine and surgery are vast treasures of learning. The learned disciplines called Shastras and imaginative and creative literature called Kavyas were separated. 
various disciplines such as Itihasa, History, Anvikshasi, Logic, Mimamsa, Interpretation, Shilpa Shastra, Architecture, Artha Shastra, Polity, Vartha, which included Agriculture, Trade, Commerce and Animal Husbandry, Dhanurvidya, Archery, have all been sources of learning. As I already mentioned about a healthy mind in a healthy body, physical education was also a part of the curriculum and a lot of importance was given on this subject. Students had to participate in Krida, games or recreational activities, Vyayama Prakara, exercises, Dhanurvidya, archery for martial skills, Yoga Sadhana for training both the body and mind. The teachers are called Gurus and the pupils are called Shishyas. Apart from this, Shastrartha or learned debates were regularly held and the advanced level students always guided their juniors. Group work was also encouraged. It is important to note that there existed both formal and informal ways of learning in ancient India. Education was imparted in patshalas, tolls, chatushpadis, temples and gurukulas. Learned people from these places or rather centers guided the young ones in imbibing a dharmic way of life. Temples were not just places of worship but were well-known centers of learning. The prevalence of viharas or Buddhist monasteries and universities enabled students to pursue higher education. Teaching, which was largely oral, had to be grasped well by the students who would remember and meditate upon what was taught to them in class. The residential places of learning, called ashramas or gurukulas, were situated in beautiful, serene surroundings. All these ashramas were mostly named after sages and hundreds of students learnt from them. The early Vedic period permitted women to learn. How can one forget prominent Vedic scholars like Maitreyi, Vishwambara, Apala, Gargi, Lopamudra and others who carved a niche for themselves and contributed immensely to education. During those days, it was imminent for students to stay away from their homes for a longer period of time, say for many years, till they achieved their goals. The Gurukulas, which housed both the Gurus and the Shishyas, was a place of bonding. It strengthened the relationship between the teacher and the student as they both helped each other in day-to-day -day life. Though it may seem that emphasis was laid on different disciplines like law, medicine, astronomy, etc., one should never discard the fact that not only were these disciplines making a student a scholar, but were also enriching his personality. I quote, During that period, the gurus and their shishyas lived together, helping each other in day-to-day -day life. The main objective was to have complete learning, leading a disciplined life and realizing one's inner potential. Students lived away from their homes for years together till they achieved their goals. The Gurukula was also the place where the relationship of the Guru and Shishya strengthened with time. While pursuing their education in different disciplines like history, art of debate, law, medicine, etc., the emphasis was not only on the outer dimensions of the discipline but also on enriching the inner dimensions of the personality. So children, we have now come to the conclusion of part 1. I hope you have all followed what was discussed today. Let us quickly take a look at the questions that have been given under comprehension. I'd like you to discuss the same. 
with your friends. Question 1. Why were travellers attracted towards India? Question 2. What were the sources of the ancient education system? Question 3. What were the features of education system in ancient India? Question 4. What was the role of a guru in pupils' lives? So, till we meet again for the discussion of part 2 of the same text, I sign off. Have a great day.